The monster in the labyrinth. <clears throat> long, long ago in Greece, there lived a brave young priest called Theseus. His father was King Aegeus, and he ruled the beautiful city of Athens. One day, Ephesus was there upon the harbor. He saw a crowd of people all weeping. Seven young men and seven maidens were being taken aboard a black sail ship, their hands tied together with cords. Who are all these people in the key? Ephesus asked the sailor. Oh, they're the families of the fourteen victims to be sacrificed. You see the seven young men and seven maidens? They're being sent to Crete. Poor souls. How I pity them. Why? What will happen to them? Bless you, boy, don't you know? They're to be fed to the terrible minotaur that lives in the labyrinth. <coughs> Fisset had heard of the minotaur, the hideous monster with the body of a giant man and the head of a bull. <coughs> it had deadly horns, enormous teeth, and lived in a vast maze in the cellars of the palace of Crete, devouring human beings. So many were the passengers of the labyrinth that no one who entered could ever find their way out. Fisus rushed back to his father's palace. Father, he cried, I have just seen fourteen young Athenians being taken aboard ship bound for Crete. Why must we send them to the sacrifice to the terrible beast the Minotaur? <coughs> because, my son, long ago there was a war between Athens and Crete. Athens was defeated, and ever since then we have had to send a tribute to Crete. Every seven years, a tribute of human sacrifices. <coughs> If you do not send these seven young men and seven maidens to be fed to the Minotaur, the king of Kurit will start the war again, and many of our people will die. But what if the Minotaur was killed? No one has ever come out of the labyrinth for life. Either the Minotaur kills them, or they are lost forever in the maze. Theseus ran back to the harbor, down to the ship with black sails, to where the young men and maidens were waiting. Their families and friends were still weeping on the dark side. People of Athens, he shouted, <coughs> do not weep, for I am going to Crete to slay the Minotaur. And with these words, Theseus boarded the ship and set sail for Crete. After many days at sea, they arrived at the beautiful island of Crete. Haunuk lives to the magnificent marble palace of King Minos. His soldiers led the young men and maidens up to a cliff path. Inside the palace, everything was painted gold and silver. The rooms are full of the richest furniture with fighting bulls and leaping dolphins painted on every wall. <coughs> In a great hall, King Minos sat on a golden throne, he had a long white beard and wore silk robes. I expected only fourteen. Well, why does King Aegeus send fifteen? Theseus stepped forward. I am Prince Theseus, son of King Aegeus, I have come to slay the Minotaur and free my people from this terrible debt. Brave words, said the king with an evil smile. Since you are so keen to meet our monster, you can be the first man to enter the labyrinth tomorrow. In a corner of a great hall stood the lovely prince Aradi. When she saw Theseus, she fell in love with him at once. I must help this brave and handsome young man, she thought. At night, when she hurried to his room, Prince Theseus, she whispered, I cannot help you slay the Minotaur, but I can help you escape from the labyrinth. You must accept my help or you will die. <coughs> Glad gladly, princess, replied Theseus. Then take the sword and this ball of thread and hide them under your robe. When you enter the maze, tie the end of the thread to the door and unwind it as you go through the dark corridors. It's your only hope to finding the, your way out. I will wait for you on the door. You must take me with you back to Athens. My father will kill me if he discovers I help you to escape. Of course I will, princess, said Theseus gently, for I already love you. <coughs> <coughs> At dawn the next day, the king's soldiers let Theseus down to the labyrinth. When the door closed behind him, he was plunged into darkness. Taking the ball of thread from under his robe, Theseus tied one into the door. He could feel the step walls of the rock on either side of him. Slowly, he made his way down the narrow path, uncoiling the thread as he went. 
further on, a little light crept down from the palace floor, and he could see a heap of skulls and bones on the ground. Then he heard a terrible roar echoing through the passages. The dreadful sound came nearer and nearer. Vicis could feel the thud of the monster's feet coming towards him. Suddenly, the hideous creature leapt at him, bellowing and roaring. Vicis sprang and started crawling around against the beast lunged at him. His time struck him a mighty blow on the chest. The minotaur fell back, stunned, and Vicis grabbed hold him and his huge sharp horns. With all his might, he held the beast down. Roar the minotaur rose again, gnashing its enormous teeth. Vicis swiftly drew his sword and thrust it three times into the minotaur's heart. The beast roared once more and then lay still. <coughs> In the darkness, Vicis fumbled from the drop through a thread. He found it and then forged it. Hand of a hat from the dark, widening corridors of the labyrinth. At last, he reached the door where Ariadne was standing. Seeing Fisius spotted with blood, she rushed up to him and embraced him passionately. We must hurry, or my first guards will find us. Then Ariadne led Fisius to where the ship anchored. There, waiting for them, were seven youths and seven maidens. And as the sun rose, they set sail for Athens. That's the end of the video, the monster in the labyrinth. Goodbye. <coughs>